welcome to uh, to uh, the Abu group and to our lunchtime learning uh, session. It's great to have you here. Great to be here. And I am with Claire Winter. Um, so Claire is a trainer, a coach, and she is host of the Cracking Content podcast. And that podcast, which has only actually been going a year, but it's already been named one of the top 20 marketing podcasts in the UK. And Claire, what you do is um, help coaches and, and creative entrepreneurs to amplify their expertise through storytelling, content and PR, so they can get more sales and make a bigger impact. And as, um, as authors, um, that's exactly what we need to hear, authors and business people, that's what we need to, um, to talk about and to know more about. So welcome, Claire, thanks for being here. Oh, thanks for having me, Lucy. It's uh, it's great to be it's great to have you. So so Claire, how did you um, how did you start um, the cracking content podcast? Where tell us a bit about your your journey? Yeah, sure. So um, I'm a journalist by trade. So I've been a journalist for twenty years, and I started my career really at ITN, working in radio for LBC um, and uh, their twenty four hour news channel. Um, fast forward a few years. Um, I worked in breakfast TV at Osterley, so it was with Sky and Princess Productions as well. And then I had my first daughter um, and got the opportunity to buy a magazine. And I'd already been working um, in local government, creating their external and internal publications. So I had had a go at designing magazines. And so I became the editor and owner of a magazine uh, for eight years. So I've wow. kind of... So we ran um, a website um, and social media channels when you could get a lot of Facebook likes without paying for advertising. Imagine that. Um, <laughs> yeah, so um, yeah, I guess I've been a content creator for a very long time and obviously, um, you know, creating content um, and things like a podcast um, and obviously publishing a book are great ways of leveraging your expertise. So if you're a business consultant or an entrepreneur in this space, you know, um, to do one or, you know, create something that has longevity. So that's what I'm all about, you know, to, you know, if you're going to create content for your business, make sure it's driving traffic back to your site or to your membership area or wherever you want to drive traffic back to, but it's um, something that's got a bit more longevity, like a blog. So obviously, I think sometimes great books come from great blogs. Um, yes, and or, or the other way around. I mean, exactly. it's, just kind of, it's kind of virtuous circle, isn't it? I mean, you yeah. And, and again, each is the other. Exactly. So you could write a great book and then release ex excerpts of the chapter and vice versa. Um, so for me, it's always I'm always thinking about what core, core content can you create for your business? Where are you driving that traffic to? So if I, I've written a blog about 10 amazing content ideas, it will also become a podcast episode right, be a right. Facebook live um so cause i like writing so my content will always start with a, a written piece um and then you i think you use social media to amplify it so that's my you know and then you're driving traffic back to where you want to drive traffic to so it's um and we were talking about this off camera weren't we where i was saying you know sometimes people write a great blog or publish a great podcast but they don't reshare it and the same goes for press coverage. You know, if you've been featured in the Daily Mail or had your business mentioned um, in uh, the Independent, reshare it, you know, keep, keep it in your content schedule, make sure you've got a press page, you know, make the most out of the coverage that you've received as well. Right, right. So I'm completely guilty of that. So I think, you know, if something nice happens or like I, you know, do a podcast episode or or get some coverage some somewhere, I think, OK, I'll share it. You know, maybe I'll share it on on Facebook and Instagram and and maybe Twitter and, and, and maybe LinkedIn. And then I think, right, that's it. I've told everybody. I, I don't want to, you know, I can't tell them. Again. Yeah, but think really about your audience that it, one, you get new people linking in with you or signing up to your yeah blog and things like that all the time so to remind them hey uh you know throwback thursday remember when we got featured in the mail you know the mail a year ago um you know always open to be doing press 
you know right. that kind of thing so I think it is resharing like I the first blog I ever wrote for my business so I launched my current business four years ago um and it was how to survive working from home I mean who knew 18 months <laughs> That's very, you know everyone's yeah, working from home you know but I've been you know and I am work from what I call the shed quarters and you know it's had loads of press coverage because home working was actually quite novel I mean now it's you know everyone's doing it but a lot of people still aspire to have an office space in their garden Absolutely. or somewhere to yeah. work from yeah complete so let's start at the beginning of this cycle of producing great content um, for 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 getting noticed for the media whatever so so where do you start where's the best place to start with creating uh, something that really is going to be a, a piece of great content yeah well I think it is about your story and obviously I'm sure that that's something you cover in your sort of book building courses and all of that stuff but it is it's what's unique about you and your business how are you different from everyone else what stories can you tell to illustrate that? You know, what do you stand for? What do you stand against? Um, you know, what's your why? Why did you set up your business? Are there stories that you can tell around that? And I, and some of the stories I really enjoy from sort of big entrepreneurs are the mistakes they've made along the way. You know, when people share that it hasn't just been a trajectory like this is actually being like this you know it's really nice to hear that you know even even people are very successful have made a lot of mistakes on the way absolutely well yeah, yeah no that's really interesting that you say that because that's something I also tell people when they are writing their book to put um, elements of their own story business journey personal story whatever's relevant through the book and don't just sort of fixate on the successes because when people are going to especially your ideal clients are going to engage with where you were, were in the same place that they are now which is yeah. needing help so so yeah so so it, you know a blog post or um a podcast or even just a social media post can work well if you just tell a story about yourself as opposed to talking about necessarily the business side of things yeah I think so and uh, you know obviously we, we in content marketing you always think oh it's got to give value it's got to give advice but actually yeah. what creates connection We've been telling stories around campfires for thousands of years. I think it's something like 62% of all conversation, we tell a story as part of that. So um, there's loads of great facts about storytelling that it's much more memorable than data. So if you want people to remember a key fact, tell a story around it and why right. that data is important. So, and I think that's something that you can, you know, as particularly if people in this group are thinking about writing a book or have written a book, is that you know the story of the book evolving is great i work with a client who self-published a novel and her story is just brilliant you know to become a best-selling amazon author wow. through self-publishing you know that's a great story in itself to tell yeah. isn't it also the power of a book and what it can do and then she got and then someone bought the audible rights you know that the, she's the audio rights she's getting paid for from a, a proper publisher so you know there's great brilliant. stories people can tell her you know around the work that they do so and for me it's like because I've got my journo hat on if you're creating great content on your website and putting out great content when when I go out on Twitter and say I'm looking for an expert a child psychologist to talk about going back to school or something like that and with hashtag journal requests um I'm gonna you, you'll get like 10 or 20 people saying oh I can help I can help and then you'll go and check out their website and their social channels so it's you know and then you're like oh they've they've been in the press before tick oh they've they've written a great blog tick you know so it's like all of those things um a lot of people I think they go for one or the other and for me great content goes hand in hand with great PR that if it's it's about how you're represented online fully um and and obviously is um authors of of a book that's something that you can be you know utilizing as well yeah 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 absolutely so I mean the other thing I always tell people to put in, in into their books are case studies of their work with their own clients so transformations they've made in other people's lives or businesses but tell those as stories too do those do those work as good content yeah exactly and and I think that's that that's what I love is that you know you could map out a year's worth of content including case studies, um, your signature kind of system and the content you're creating in 12 months would make a book, wouldn't it? If you're if you're interviewing yeah, your clients um, 
and and then that can make you know make up your book i think that's a great you know one way of one way of doing it so and i guess you don't release all of it and then you know the trail is sign you know get on the wait list for my book to to find out more so yeah i definitely think case studies are great i think testimonials work really well video testimonial works really well i've interviewed clients on my podcast that works really well because it's right. real to people Right. So Michaela says um, quite rightly, quite often it's the more personal posts that generate the most interaction. And that's that's really true. I mean, I noticed that I tend not to be incredibly personal in my social media. But when I am, I think, why don't I do this more often? Because I get yeah. much more traction. Yeah. And I just saw one of your lovely dogs behind you. And if you shared a picture of him, you'd get loads of traction. <laughs> I do occasionally all my chickens I sometimes do. <laughs> yeah but people you know I call them I call them like the water cooler moments that we are all missing yeah. right now right so the like I used to do, you know although I work um I've got you know a virtual team um and we used to be able to meet in person you know actually my VA's in um near Norfolk in Norfolk so the likelihood of that happening is you know so we're, we're meeting virtually but having those water cooler moments are like what are you doing at the weekend or show us yeah. your pets and what do you think about this what you're watching on Netflix you know people are like what's the point in doing that because because you're engaging and connecting and having real conversations with people and obviously you can introduce have you ever thought about writing a book you know and it, yeah. you know what, what what would you write about those sort of things people love to talk about Right, right. Yeah. No, that's that's uh, uh, that's that's interesting. And uh, Michaela also says, I recognise your background, Claire. I think I've watched at least one of your videos before. Oh, good. So that's, good. <laughs> <laughs> so, so actually, that's a kind of personalisation thing too about in video as well, isn't there? Yeah. Um, you know, you don't. I mean, having. Um, I know. You know, quite a few people have the kind of virtual backgrounds, but in in terms of creating content through videos that actually it's quite impersonal isn't it it's you refusing to show what, what your the mess behind you <laughs> well exactly <yes. laughs> I mean I think this is I think we yeah I think this new hybrid way of working means that some people still haven't got established office space I mean yeah. certainly at the beginning of lockdown my husband sort of plonked himself next to me with his computer and then we were both on like three or four zoom calls a day and we both were like well, this isn't going to work. Like, <laughs> no, quite. I was here first. <laughs> but I do, you know, I do know women that did give up their office spaces, but for, for, for you know, husbands or partners that, um, you know, yeah. you know, that needed privacy for their calls or, you know, there's lots of different demands, aren't there? So a lot of people of had course, to have yeah. still doing a lot of jiggling around in their houses so they can work. Yeah. yeah yeah no indeed no it's just it's just a very interesting sort of that that the personal stuff is what what you would call really strong copy and it takes all kind of forms really yeah um, definitely I mean I still think you know the value values driven stuff or you know advice and things like that you know yeah. so people know that you're really good at what you do and like you say I mean like a book or a podcast or anything like that or a blog it's just great bits of content to refer people back to it's places where you can um, you know embed a lead magnet so you can grow your email list and I'm a massive fan of um, you know creating content continually for a website because you own it you can drive traffic back to it um, the more you blog if you guest blog and that's part of the pitching to the press strategy is also looking at niche you know um, other niches that you can write for so like I've commented and written for photographers because obviously photos and you know we're not in, in conflict I quite often refer this particular photographer she takes my pictures often my clients are like I'm, I'm refreshing my website um, you know, where did you get your pictures done? So that works really well. So if you go for someone right. who compliments what you do and guest blog for them, yeah, uh, that also helps. So that's another strategy. You know, um, it's not just about mainstream media anymore. We're all content creators. We're all broadcasters. So, you know, if you've got, um, you know, I've had all sorts of people pitch to be on, on my podcast and, you know, it's getting those pitches right. You know, someone called me Brenda the other day and I'm like, oh. well, yeah. And it doesn't take very long. <laughs> You've done your research well. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, no one likes to be called the wrong name. Okay. And that's one thing I would say, you know, 
it's much better to be intentional, like the same, you know, I'd say the same for content in your pitching that you do to the press is that you identify who your ideal client, what they listen to, watch, read, ask them if you don't know, if you've got an engaged audience, sometimes people don't, but you know, what say, what podcast are you listening to? What content do you like? reading and you know what what may what media do you do you read you you might be surprised like I was working with someone and she works with female leaders and they were so busy they didn't really consume mainstream media they said their favorite medium was podcasts because right. they could listen on the way to work listen when they were doing the school run or whatever they were doing they or at the gym they were they liked multitasking so podcasts w w was her strategy was her strategy because she's like well they that's what they listen to. That's what I'm going to go for. So again, I think it's thinking about your who you're trying to trying to attract. So there's one level of if I'm featured in the Independent or uh, you know the, the Daily Telegraph, that's a, you get those badges of trust on your website. You'll see entrepreneurs have, you know featured in Forbes, featured here. Yeah. Um, so that's an elevation exercise. It's not necessarily where your ideal client is. I mean so many people you know love love them or loathe them a lot of people read the mail online you know so if you get featured in there um for the right reasons you know you're gonna you're gonna get a lot of eyes on your content and your business so um and that's one way and then the other way is that those more niche publications um or other entrepreneurs websites where you could blog for them um will help your domain authority so where you're found in organic search but also create sort of connections in their communities so there's lots and lots of different ways now because we've got influencers um and also entrepreneurs who who themselves are kind of like influencers in the online space yeah yeah definitely so if you were going to um say you had an ambition to um get featured let's say on in, in on forbes Mm. what would your what would your strategy be how would you approach them what yeah. would what would the best kind of story be how would you craft that story what 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 do you need to well, I, was on a, um, I was on a, I'm not going to take credit for this because I was on a panel with a sky producer and he came up with a brilliant thing he said has it got an st in it and everyone on every it was on clubhouse everyone's like and it's like is it a first a shortest a longest and so on he said you know visually because obviously right. it's TV, but that that's, you know, is it the first of its kind? Is it, you know, and so on. So that's yeah. going to help. Is it completely new? Um, of Sometimes having a celebrity involved is useful. You know, is it a unique angle? Is it something, is it something that has never been covered for, before? So that's looking um, at Forbes and seeing what they've covered before and pitching new and different ideas that they haven't already covered see you know doing a research seeing who the journalists are and what topics they're covering because that's the other thing you know right. you might find there's someone that specifically talks about your niche area like it could be leadership or business development or or so on so you'd look for that niche um the person who's talking about your niche as well so it's sort of doing doing your research and again that's that thing don't do a blanket pitch for a podcast find out their name find out who they interview and pitch something different you know I've had people pitch um uh content creation through artificial intelligence and I'm like that's really not my jam I want people to create their own content and tell their own stories yeah. I think that's more powerful I don't think they need to use a robot um you know so that's not a good fit for me and if they listen to my podcast and actually did a bit of research they'd know that I'd never feature a, a bit of software like that it doesn't fit with with what I talk about I might talk about content but I'm certainly not going to talk about AI and content no that's 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 really useful to know so you should um um kind of aim for contacting someone specific rather yeah. than you know just sort of saying oh I want to be on Forbes or wherever the day yeah, no, I'll I think just... those, yeah and and the, you know the best way is to want to be press ready so obviously having a bio and a photo and a lot of people and obviously I'm, I'm you know when you've when you've published a book to have those things available so when you get an opportunity and it might just be doing a live like we're doing right now or it could be on a podcast or it could be um you know getting a mention in a in a newspaper article or an on, or online that you've got that bio those pictures ready so you're press ready so you and also right. you know you've got a press page on your site so before you start on this journey of pitching to the press 
that's one of the key things that, you know so because people miss opportunities there's nothing more frustrating than receiving a press release and there's a mobile number on it or or a way of contacting someone and they take 12 hours to get back to you right, you right. in a fast moving news environment like tv or radio they yeah. want it yes now you know and that's the thing so if you're going to do a concerted media campaign make sure you're available <laughs> you know sounds really yes. obvious but people... yes no but it's 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 often what you don't really think about because i think i think often people kind of think oh i'll kind of randomly target um you know the media or some aspect of the media and then don't really believe that anyone's going to follow up with them and yes. then when they do follow up they're not oh, it's sort of like a surprise and they haven't thought it through so yeah that's yeah very, i mean i think been in communities advice. where someone said you know a journalist has gone for like for pete's sake if you know if you've if you've contacted me i've i've gone out on a journal request and said i want to feature new businesses that launched in lockdown i mean there's been hundreds of features yeah. on that. there's still opportunity now you know have there was a press request today have you done something fabulous in lockdown have you launched a business have you run a marathon da 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 da, da for a, a you know a women's magazine perfect for probably lots of people in your community who've written a book you know it's a great yeah. story to tell yeah um and the person said yes i'd like to be featured and then never sent them the images that that they needed for that article and the yeah. person one was really frustrated and probably the person who pitched wasn't ready they, they didn't have any pictures no so, no so it's like there yeah, is a that's... there is a piece of work you need to do beforehand um, and, you know, bearing in mind, it is a numbers game, it, you know, um, yeah. we get hundreds of when I was an active editor, and I know you've been an editor as well, you get hundreds of press releases every week, um, yeah. even daily, you know, so you do need to, um, you know, if you're going to write a press release, it's got to be newsworthy. Yes, yes, absolutely. So um, Rachel says, I saw an article in my local paper and thought I could apply to the feature writer. And we sorted a good article together. For me, it ended up being half a page plus a photo. Um, and I have to keep in touch. So yeah, that's a good, Perfect. That's a good story. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, exactly. And that's exactly what I would do. If you're, if you are new to the, this press journey, think about your local papers. There's loads of things like Essex Life, um, the Archant Group has loads of local yeah. glossy magazines. Um, the author I was talking about before, she she sent a pitch to Essex Life and didn't hear, obviously, because they print monthly, she didn't hear from them for about eight weeks and she's got a full page feature because she's an Essex author, Fantastic. for example. So yeah, I would definitely go down the local route first. And like you say, find the name of the journalist, tweet them, email them, tell them your story about you know launching a book or you know um great bit, bit of content for them you know and that's the thing you've got to think everyone's creating content all the time you know yeah. if someone pitched me a great blog idea that wasn't in competition and they weren't a competitor i would i would you know put it on my website for sure you know yeah absolutely so mm -hmm. So what are the, what are your tips for creating a great story or a great piece of content? Is there, are there a kind of, um, you know, do you um, have a particular way of writing things that, that you can break it down into? I mean, I think, I think the main thing um, that we always sort of talk about is that, you know, um, most important facts first is the, the, you know, you'll know all this stuff, the who, what, where, why, where, and when. Sometimes people miss this basic stuff. It's that sort of news triangle of the most important facts first. Um, if you think about the way newsrooms and people work, they want quick, short, snappy content. You know, it's, it, the days are gone when you're going to get, you know, a thousand word article. You know, some people will be working on them in advance. Um, someone on my Pitch the Press program um, is a career specialist um, and helps people um, do um, apprenticeships. So obviously there was people pitching for about A-levels. We've got A-level results coming up on August the 10th. So she's going to be in the Daily Telegraph this weekend talking about the different options for people who've done A-levels, that there's, there's another route other than university. And that that was sort of pre-planned content. So it's keeping your eye out and knowing that she, you know, she's very aware that that dates out. So she's contacting, she's been in the media before, she's recontacting them. She's saying she's available for comment on that day. So that's, again, like establishing yourself as 
the person to talk about this bit of of your area of expertise so yeah it's thinking you know really getting what the top line is as we yeah. call it or the hook so it's like what's going to catch um you know someone who's scrolling through their inbox what's going to catch their eye what's new and different or are you going to add a new angle to an existing story we would call that news jacking or something like that is, is there a new angle that you can add so for me it would be you know um muckrack um I, I'll post it in the link below. They give really good, they survey thousands of journalists and saying, what days do they like being pitched? It's a Monday and a Tuesday. And how long, this is great, 200 words. Should, wow, right. So, you know really what I mean? so it's about brevity actually yeah. when it comes to the media because they are busy people. And, and is they, that just the pitch or the story? The pitch is- I would, No, that's the pitch. And then right. the story, they'd come back. I mean, unless you're asked to write a full feature, and there are a few publications, um, I think like Green Parent will will take a thousand words submission. But I would, I would rather pitch this two hundred word story and then come back with more detail if they if they bite if they say, oh yeah, I'm interested, because they'll always come back. You can always you know say I'm available for interview, or if you want you know if you're a product based business you might have journals or something attached to what you're doing if you're in, in this group um you know if you want to review it or interview me i'm available so yeah i think it is brevity and it, and, and again with press releases keep them to one page if you can right yeah right. to them at the most yeah so yeah. i've i've always um um heard that you should write your press release um, for a journalist as if it was a, 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 a ready for press article. So, um, you know, give them everything they need so they don't have to do too much work. Is that, is that so, is that right? Do you yeah. Think? Uh, yeah. Again. Yeah. You would do the, you would do like the intro paragraph with the top, the top line, the, the, the news piece, you'd include um, a quote. And again, you know, um, the two or three main points that are, are of your story. And then underneath you'd have background and info and say that you're available, there's images available, you're available for interviews. So, you, you know, they might just lift that copy and tweak it yeah. or they will come back to you if they want to do something, you know, if they actually want to interview you in person or go further with it. But yeah, definitely make it press ready. Right, yeah. right. And yeah. how, how long did you say, or, do, or did you not say, um, a press release should be? Um, I think probably about 500 words, 500, whatever fits on yeah. the page. So yeah, yeah, I would, I would keep, again, keep them short. If you're, if you've launched a book, keep it short with a quote, the three main things that you're thinking about. And, I, and, and, and that's actually a useful thing. Like if you were going, I was talking to someone in my community who was really nervous, they're on a local BBC radio it was their first radio experience and I was like well one I know it sounds ridiculous but on a post-it note or a notebook write all your social handles and your website the amount of people that got stage fright and get you know get a handle wrong or something like that and it's actually weird you don't often say your own social handles right um so make sure you've written them down and have three stories to tell so three one, oh, that is a really good that's a really good tip three stories and yeah. that, about a sort of um covering different things or yeah like definitely stories or what would yeah. you well like an origin story is quite good like we've talked about my background yeah um a client story and maybe just it's a, 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 maybe something fun or interesting that's you know relevant to your business but not uh um not salesy right Right, so right, being able absolutely. to throw in, talk about something in an authentic way and showing the value that you can offer people without sounding like you're pushing your product or book. Yes, that's really important, yeah. isn't it? Not to be yeah. not to be seen as, a, as, as pitching for business um, yeah. when you're just telling story exactly the same as in a book. A book is not a, a marketing brochure, so you don't pitch for business in your book. You just tell good stories and uh, let people know how good you are. Yeah, yeah so exactly. Rachel's saying um, three stories, excellent idea, good tip. And Michaela said, this is so useful. Pitch on Monday or Tuesday with 200 words. Yeah. Um, Michaela also says, this is a good question. If you could get a quote from someone influential or well-known to include in a press release, would that be a useful thing to do? Yeah, definitely. I think if you got someone um, uh, of influence, like reviewing your book, for example, definitely include that. Yeah. Right endorsed by your you know you could getting a celebrity endorsement or uh, you know a, if you got 
you know, James Clear or, you know, whoever, you know, someone yeah. that you really admire to say your book's excellent. Yeah, yeah. definitely yeah. include that. Absolutely. Yeah. No, that's great. Thanks. Thanks for that question, Michaela. That's a great question. Thanks. Okay. Yeah, no, definitely. So so let's go back to the um, the podcast and the repurposing, mm -hmm. um, because I think, you know, as we sort of started off saying um, we, you know, we kind of go out there, we might get the story, we might get the thing, um, the, the you know, the, the coverage that we want. So, you know, Rachel has got her story in the local um, uh, magazine or newspaper. I was Archant, um, as she says. Yeah. Um, so what should she now do about it if she wants to kind of amplify that? Should she keep yeah. posting that on social media? Yeah, definitely. Now, you do need to be careful. Um, Archant are covered by the NLA. Um, which is copyright. So you right. can't show screenshots of articles that you've been in unless you have explicit permission. You can use logos. So that's why you'll say featured in Forbes, featured in the Daily Telegraph, rather than a, a snapshot of the article. Um, some people will give you permission, but to be on the safe side, just share links. So on your press page, there should be a digital link to the your article rachel's right. article and that's what she can she can say featured in whatever the local name is and use their logo but she can't even she can't, she can't pull out copy yeah yeah, yeah okay no that's copy. that's also really good advice claire thank yeah. you a lot of people i see them do it all the time and i think gosh there's a, there was a famous case of a, a small business that you know was featured in okay magazine yeah obviously they put it all over their social media they, um, I think they put it on their website and they did get sued. Oh, it's a bit no. like car clamping, you know, when like no one will actually, it's not the actual organization that's clamping you. It's the same with the NL, you know, it's a separate organization that will go after you yes. for, for the breach of copyright. So right. to be on the safe side, I would, I've seen people like hold a magazine and say, I'm in it. You probably could just about get away with that, but right. you know, it's actually just showing the logo and the digital link you're allowed to share. So, yes. Yeah, so like, if it's online, you don't take a screenshot of it. You put the link in. No. And no, I mean, like, um, you know, the, fa the family's magazines that my old magazine um, that I owned and I still write for, we're not covered under the NLA. So you could, you know, um, we often share PDFs of, of articles to people and, we, and they're right to share them. So, again, it's always worth checking. You can check on the NLA website if they're All right. Just so what's the NLA? What does NLA stand for? That's a really good question. I thought, oh, she's going to ask me. Um, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, it's fine. I actually can't remember off the top of my head. Um, but again, I will share um, a link. I'll try and Google it. Uh, yeah, you've, you've caught me out today. <laughs> I'm um, sorry, I, Claire. Yeah, yeah, right. I'm desperately exactly. Googling it, but it's. Um, um, Something oh, NLA like media access. Um, mm, 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 it doesn't actually say, funnily I enough. I don't know if it does. NLA media access. Um, doesn't say what it stands for. It's got to be something like licensing agency. Yeah, yeah. What the N is, but yeah. No, but anyway, I will probably. share. Um, I, I will share. What did I say? I was going to share the muckrack one, and I'll oh, write a note, and then the NLA one. Oh right, yes. No, I mean, if you would come back and put that in the um in the comments. So yeah, that, happy um, to, we, yeah, happy to, yeah, happy to, yeah. They're all things, but you know, I think the main thing is um, understanding that content is everywhere. Yeah. Um, to stand out, it, you know, it's a noisy world out there. So you've got to have a strong story and it could often be your personal story and then you weave in what you do as a business owner. So you might have yes. done something incredible, um, swum the channel, climbed a mountain, raised a lot of money for charity you know they are all sort of stories that people are interested in hearing and you can also weave in a story about your business like um someone I work with she they was it was a woman I think it was women magazine said have you done something fabulous when you're 50 so she'd done aerial arts some circus wow. performing so she had a fab picture of herself you know in a hoop um but she's also launched a brilliant business so she talked about that but also got a massive chunk about her business so it's also being creative yeah and being adventurous in your pitching right right so but, but lead with the personal story and yeah and because that's what we're interested in as humans yeah. and as journalists we're not that interested in you know new hires or even new products unless there's a story told with you know 
with it i think no yeah. no exactly and as i've sort of said said i think probably before business owner writes book is not it's not a story that's gonna um capture any journalistic <laughs> imaginations you've got to kind of you know the no book itself, no business owner swim channel and writes book is better yes yeah. <laughs> or something like that yeah yes exactly exactly yeah no that's that's uh that's really oh uh, claire that's that's incredibly um helpful and and useful uh this has been a really uh, great conversation so have you got any kind of like three last tips for um people trying to get press coverage pr um, yes. or media coverage and it doesn't it doesn't have to be um the media in the in the kind of classic sense does it i mean being on people's podcasts being um you know uh, it, well but, you know talking in a facebook group it also is, yeah. is good coverage yeah, I mean, that was one of my grace. I think in 2019, I did a guest e expert slot probably once a week. You know, I grew my my own Facebook community. I think we've got about 2000 people in there, mainly from doing guest e guest experting. So that's another way to reach, you know, if you want to reach entrepreneurs online, that's a great yeah. way. And that is part of um, and that gets you practiced for for if you get a radio opportunity. I think the more lives and the more conversations you have with people online, like the one we're having now is, you know, is powerful as well. So yeah, there's lots and lots of different ways. I think, and you would agree with me, I know, start with story, you know, what's important, what's different. Is there, have you done something with an ST in it? Um, and don't be afraid to pitch, you know, don't, don't think that you're not important. I think that's a big thing. And I'm sure you work with people on this, this sort of visibility issue of, oh, why would anyone want to hear about me and what and my business and what I offer? And it's like, well, you have something unique to tell the world. We all do. We all have a purpose. We all have something unique that we can share and teach people. And it's being able to identify what that is and, and, and being brave enough to pitch it. Yes. And I think, you know, also when when you are if you if you worry about pitching, I mean, what's the worst can, that can happen? That's they what I say. You, or, yeah. or they say no. I mean, that's and then that's it. That's, that's it. There's nothing worse than that. No, no, exactly. And it is. And, and again, I think it's being creative. So going for the more unusual pitches and putting yourself forward for things and don't get me wrong there's there is a great web um, facebook group called feature me but they often ask for things like will you pose in your have you lost a lot of weight do you want to pose Ooh, in your underwear wow. in the daily mail they love it they love it don't they they love stuff like that yeah and i would say don't do stuff like that one if it makes you feel uncomfortable two posing in your underwear in the mail unless you sell underwear or maybe you're a pt i can't see any other reason why you <laughs> no do you know what I mean? But they there are those sort of yes. tabloid opportunities and you do need to be circumspect. You do need to go, is this going to forward my reputation or my business? Yes. Would I be happy with this in five years time, two yeah, years? Yeah, exactly. Time, Just to get a backlink or a, a mention. I mean, yeah. one of my favourite, I don't go in there very often. I dip in there sometimes. They One of my favourite press requests was, have you hired an island? Because there was a, at the beginning of lockdown, there was a footballer who um, had hired an island because he wanted to escape, you know, everything that was happening. So they were asking for anyone else in the group. And I was thinking, mm, probably not the right group, but <laughs> but it did make me laugh. So they do come up with, you know, you've got to remember that there is a, you know, um, things like the sun and the mirror, they want these outlandish stories. Yeah, yeah. So just be a bit, yes, careful about what you yeah. but, what you, you know, but sometimes, Yeah, but sometimes the opportunities are, um, a positive as well so yes. you know it's just you have to do a sense check of when when you have the conversation with a journalist is this going to elevate my brand is this going to elevate my expertise is this going to push me forward and um you know you often get um, a read they'll say we'll do a read through you know we'll read it through to you before we publish and things like that you can insist on that but yes. again ask for a link not all they don't always give you one but remember right. so would you know can you link to my business website as well it's not always a guarantee but um it's always worth asking yes right yes no absolutely absolutely um that's brilliant claire so claire um where can people find your podcast it is simply the cracking content podcast it is yes um, so itunes spotify um, you can, um, it's on my website as well, which is clairewinter.info. So yeah, come and check it out. I'd love people to listen to it. 
that's brilliant and, and do you work with people individually if somebody wants to yeah i do, do um, yeah yeah we i do content planning sessions and also pitching to the press so getting people press ready writing their bios fantastic um, helping them start a press list and figure out who they want to target yeah yes oh gosh the press list that's yet another story isn't it yes yeah, yeah we who could do you actually want to go for and what yes yeah no so that's uh that's that's a whole yes no i can see that's an incredibly valuable service oh well i i will put all this up in the top of this post and please do come along and um and and um in the comments put any other links that you want to any any links where people can get hold of you listen to the podcast etc um, oh, that would be brilliant thank well, you Claire thank you so much for this um, people have obviously been listening avidly and saying oh good tip good tip that's great so <laughs> um, thank you thank you so much for this um, and um, uh, we'll uh, hopefully talk to you soon yeah thank you Lucy